so that was kind of the the 10 minute version, I guess 14 minute version of the functions of stage lighting. So again, hopefully most of you, if you've studied, had a lighting class before, if you studied lighting at all, you've heard of those things before. Um, if not, hopefully that was interesting. So the next thing we're gonna talk about then is the qualities of light. So we've already kind of talked about these things a little bit, but the qualities are the various parameters or attributes or features of light that we can manipulate in order to fulfill those earlier functions. So for example, intensity. Intensity is probably the most obvious thing that we can control about light. Next one would be color, texture. This is gobos, this is uh, focus, sharpness. Distribution, or where the light is coming from. And movement. Now movement can be a, you might think of it as like a moving light, but it actually is any change in any of those other categories. So a moving light changing its focus would be a movement, but it would be a, a change of distribution. Right. So intensity, when we're talking in stage lighting, we basically are talking how bright or how dim something is on a scale from zero to 100. All of you, if you've ever touched a lighting board before, you know this, you're typing in the channels you want, you're telling them to go to full, you're telling them to go out, et cetera, et cetera. Color, the hue, the saturation. Kind of quick way to define this, think of the hue as what color it is, and the saturation as how much of, how much of the color that is. So, you know, less saturated color is gonna be here towards the center, towards white. More saturated, it's gonna work out towards the outsides of that circle. So I could say magenta, when I say magenta, I could mean pretty much anything in this range, uh, and then I could start working with my saturation to, to figure out how magenta it is. Texture, so this is templates, gobos. Those of you who know me know that this is my go-to gobo, my favorite gobo, GAM579. Uh, you can have, Breakups like this, you can have very literal gobos that have text in them that have, uh, you know, logos, things like that. <clears throat> if you notice here too, we also have, this is where kind of haze to me starts to get involved. So if you don't use haze in your shows, try it. The way I like to describe haze to producers who are skeptical is I could either light all of your scenery and light all of your people, or I could light the entire atmosphere. So it's kind of that thing of like, I could make the set red, or I could make like the entire theater feel red. Um, and those are two very, very different things. And I think that you know, the, the haze part of it can be very powerful. So you can see in this one here too, I've got, uh, it's that same kind of GAM 579, but I've started to frost it a little bit. So you see the edges are a little bit softer. Also with texture then is focus or edge. So, this is from, this is actually, this was over 10 years ago now, a production of Rent that I did at that performing arts school. And you can see these, both of these people, uh, Mimi over here on the right and Collins over here on the left, they are both in the same follow spot, right? But the big difference in the two is Mimi's is very hard edged and Collins's is very soft edge. So something as simple as changing the edge of that follow spot has completely changed the connotation of what, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to convey to the audience. So if I were to put, for example, that hard edge spot on Collins, now instead of it this being like this kind of nice soft moment where he's just being pulled out from the other characters, now it's like, oh, he's in a show and I wanna direct all my focus to him. And with Mimi, that's what she's doing. She's singing out tonight. Uh, you can see all the glitter flying out of her hair there. So we want, we want that hard edge. We wanna be like, hey, look, she's a, she's a performer. This is where we wanna look. If we were to put a soft edge follow spot on her, it wouldn't be, I think, as bad as, as the opposite with Collins, but I don't think it would have that same impact. We've done a lot of shows in the last year, my team and I, it feels like where there's shows within shows, and that's kind of like the, the go-to device for how to, how to delineate when it's the show within the show and when it's the actual show, and that's just by changing the edge of the follow spot, because audiences will kind of accept that, oh, I'm doing an old-timey show, it's got this old-timey looking follow spot. So. All right. Uh, so the next up is distribution. So again, this is where the light is coming from. Here's a light plot. Uh, this is actually the plot from the birds. You can see that set. You can in, in this, you can actually see how just how close together they were. So in that photo I showed you before, excuse me, before uh, the dancers were standing about right here, and that woman was climbing up the stairs right here. So probably 10 to 12 feet, maybe a little bit more between those two things. If you're interested in paperwork, I'm gonna be doing my paperwork session next week. I've got a couple of, uh, of paperwork things happening next week. Uh, I'll talk about those at the end of class or you can check out the website. 
Uh, and here's a quick little time lapse I did that also kind of shows some distribution stuff. So I thought this was a pretty cool example of seeing a lot of different lights coming from a lot of different angles at once. All right, so we're able to we're able to do a lot of things just by by changing that by changing that angle. That, that didn't make any sense. I apologize, but you got it. This was from a production of Hairspray that we did last summer. So cool. Uh, and then the final thing again is movement. Uh, so again, a movement is any change in any of those things. So what you're looking at right now is are two photos of the same scene taken about 10 minutes apart. In the first scene, the first part of the scene, these two characters are sitting on this porch and there the sun is going down, they're referencing the sunset, they're referencing all of these things. And the scene actually lasts like 20 or 30 minutes. Um, and by the time it ends, it's like fully nighttime. So you can see in this, uh, the, the, you've got this, there's a little bit of a pinkness to it. That's just from the camera that wasn't actually in real life. I need to touch that photo up. Um, but you can see it looks very kind of sunsetty. And in the background behind it, we actually had a psych that's not in the photo. And over the course of that 10 minutes, the intensity changed, the color changed to be more of a cool feel, more of a nighttime feel. And then the angle also changed. You can start, you can kind of see, especially on his face over on the side here, he's got kind of a, a, of a cool blue highlight, almost like a, a moonlight or even a street lamp or something kind of lighting him from that side versus this other one where he was a little more evenly lit. 